Tech Cocktail Sessions, educational and inspirational talks from experienced startup founders, entrepreneurs, and thought leaders. So, um, well, Andy, you kind of are, we are let's, let's thank Frank and Jen again, because we have to, because they're awesome. Because this has really been a great couple of days, and Tony and the rest of the Downtown Project folks and all the Zappos folks who are uh, here, thank you so much for everything that you're doing. So, um, the title of my talk is finding passion and serendipity. And so as a career, people say, you know, what do you do, Kathy? And so the question, the answer I have is, you know, well, do you want to know what I've done? Or do you want to know what I'm about to do? Because they're actually pretty different. So what I've done historically, and what other than that is all about, is about storytelling. And storytelling is probably one of the most misunderstood and overused words in marketing today. It's a, it's a buzzword that people throw around. A lot of people don't necessarily understand what it means, mostly because they're so busy trying to tell the story that they're not taking the time to step away and see if the story actually is a story. So what do I mean by that? I, I, I'm going to tell you a little story about what my life is like these days, and it all starts with bumping into Tony Shea at a conference last May when he says to me, Kathy, why don't you come to Vegas this summer and check out what we're doing? I said, well, Tony, you just said Vegas and summer in the same sentence, and I can think of a lot of things that are wrong with that. He said, no, 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 no. You need to come check out the downtown project. So I thought, okay. And so he sends me an email. He connects me with the folks on the team. And in parentheses, at the bottom of the email, he says, by the way, the place where you're going to stay is dog-friendly. I thought, oh, well, that's really interesting. I'll make a summer vacation out of it, and I'll go to Las Vegas this summer with my dog. I'll take a road trip from San Francisco. So I show up on August 1st here in the wonderful city of Las Vegas. It's about 6 p.m. It's about 95 degrees. You could still cook an egg on the sidewalk, I'm pretty sure. And my 70-pound Labradoodle was walking like a chihuahua because the sidewalks were so hot. So I thought, well, this is terrible. How, how's my dog going to find anybody to play with? We walk into the lobby, we see all of these dogs. You know, if you don't know, the Ogden is often called the Dogden because there's so many dogs that live there. But every dog that we ran into in the lobby, they don't want to have anything to do with them. They're all on leash, they're all kind of cranky, probably pissed off because they haven't played, had gone for a good run in a while. So I start thinking, you know, it'd be really interesting if there was a good dog park or something going on here in downtown Las Vegas. So I start talking to people. People said, oh, well, that's a really interesting idea. Have you talked to so-and-so? There they are over there. They introduce me. Oh, well, that's an interesting conversation I have with that person. And we go to another conversation. Long story short, serendipity over the next 10 days, each person I met would say, oh, that's an interesting idea. Have you met so-and-so? And by the way, they're sitting right there. This idea of collisions and serendipity of meeting interesting people. So long story short, I left Vegas after 10 days having committed to submit a business plan. And in about a month and a half's time, I'm moving to Las Vegas to leave the technology industry and to open a dog daycare, dog park, and boarding facility in the city of Las Vegas. <laughs> Which I'm really excited about. Um, it's why I wore the fur today, because it's all about the dog lady. So why do, I, why do I bring all of this up? So, you know, yesterday, Aziz was talking yesterday about this idea of the... the the kind of the path of least resistance, right? This idea of like doing the easy thing, of always doing the easy thing. I actually think of it in a, in a different way. You know, so often people try to force a career path or force what they think their life is supposed to be. You know? Now, this, the people in this room are not necessarily that particular group of people because you are all doing something fascinating that you're passionate about. But think about most of the people in the world who, you know, they get in their car every day and they, you know, it's, they're off to make the donuts. They drive, you know, like lemmings in little metal boxes to an office and they don't necessarily ever really step back and explore what it is that they're really doing it for. You know, we heard a little bit yesterday about corporate culture and working in places where people can find that sense of passion. So for me, when I think about storytelling now, as opposed to the way I thought about it three months ago, to me, it's about taking a step back. Because that's what I was doing this summer. I decided I was going to take the summer to explore. You know, I've worked for the last 20 years in the tech industry. I've produced conferences. I've worked in media outlets. I've done PR. I've done marketing. I've done any array of things, all on the sales of marketing and biz dev side of technology. 
And it's all been great. It's all been really interesting, and it's my skill set as a storyteller. But it was never really a fit. It was always kind of a square peg in a round hole. And so when I left my last, I was working with a startup, I left them in May, and I decided I was going to take the summer, and I wasn't going to commit to anything. I was just going to explore. I was going to say yes to every conversation. I was going to say yes to every interesting idea that someone said, hey, Kelly, have you thought about this? I looked at a job at Intel. I talked to the folks at Microsoft. I mean, corporate job. You know, if I had thought about it for a second, I thought, no way, I'm not working at a big company. But I said yes. And I explored the conversations. So when Tony said, come to Las Vegas and check it out, I said yes. And I came and I checked it out. And I did something that I think most of us today aren't really comfortable doing, which is I allowed myself to sit in uncertainty. Now, it's not like I was doing it forever. It's not, I gave myself a little window of opportunity for it, but we w live in a world that moves so fast. Everybody thinks, oh, I just got that email. I have to answer it right away. You know, I've, where was, where's the email inbox that was productive today? Where'd he go? He's over here somewhere. I, I saw you. Well, someone was talking to me today about, about email productivity and kind of getting through, getting through emails productively, right? Well, what does that mean? We have these emails that come in and how, you know, we just let the inbox get more and more full. But then we respond and we get online to Twitter, we get online to Facebook, we have to respond so quickly. We spend so much time moving quickly that we don't really step back and think about what it is we're trying to communicate. And in that rush, can we really be thoughtful in the kinds of stories that we're telling? So. What I would encourage you to do, besides move to Las Vegas and start something completely new and different, um, what I would encourage you to do is think about what you're doing on a daily basis. Think about the stories that you're telling and take a, just take a minute to pause and step back from it. Because the story that you'll find that you tell as a result, I don't know, may make your life go to the dogs. Mm -hmm. <laughs> 